Yeah, after I finished college uh, wrestling, I coached for a couple of years in, in college, and then uh, it was my first year coaching at the high school in Pendleton, and uh, that's when when I contracted the infection. I first noticed it. I thought it was a, an ingrown hair. Um, I, I wasn't sure what it was exactly. I didn't know if it was a, a spider bite or, or an ingrown hair. I wound up having three different surgeries. They were like, oh my gosh, uh oh, it's, it's MRSA, this is not good. You know, we, we always had cleaned our mats on a daily basis and, and that kind of thing, but you know, our, our focus was not on, on prevention of skin infections. It was more on getting better at wrestling, obviously. We did have a, a team rule at, this, at the time that, that every kid needed to shower after, after practice and, and wear clean clothes and things like that, but it certainly wasn't policed um, very closely and, and made sure that every kid was diligent and, and making sure they were avoiding you know, infections. Okay, so we know that is really dangerous, but what is MRSA? Well, it's a bacteria, a bug, a germ, a microscopic killer that slips into your skin and infects it. It's also the most common cause of skin and tissue infections in the U.S. today. MRSA stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a staph infection that has evolved through the years. It's gotten tougher, and now the common antibiotics like penicillin, methicillin, and oxacillin no longer affect it. These resistant bugs can even beat the newest and best antibiotics out there, allowing MRSA to spread and grow. You know, growing up wrestling, um, most of the the skin infections and whatnot that you would hear about would be ringworm. Occasionally you'd run into some staph infection. You know, it didn't initially look like anything that, that uh, was gonna be a serious problem. I waited till Monday morning, went to the doctor, got some antibiotics, uh, returned home. Things didn't get any better. They actually progressed. They got a little bit worse and a little bit worse. Went back on Monday to the emergency room. Um, got some more antibiotics, some different antibiotics. I was um, under the impression that that, uh, that second round would, would do the trick. The thing that most people don't realize is the progression and seriousness of MRSA. Some cases within days and sometimes even hours. Something as simple as a small boil or a cut can become an abscess or a series of small boils might erupt. If you ignore it, the wound can grow and grow in length and in depth. If left untreated, it can even move deeper into your body and infect your blood, your organs, or your bones. In the worst cases like mine, you end up in a hospital bed with an IV in your arm. People have had limbs amputated, and otherwise healthy young athletes have even died. On Thursday, I saw the nurse practitioner at our school, and she said, you have to, you have to get in to, to see the specialist because this, isn't, this is not a good situation. And again, by that time, my leg had, had really, really swollen up, and, and things had significantly deteriorated. The initial uh, site of the injury was, was right here, it was just a little spot, and I still have actually a little scar right there, and uh, that's where it started, and then it progressed, like I said, it, by the end of the day it was probably about like that, um, and then that was on a Saturday, Sunday morning, it had started to crawl up my leg. By Monday or Tuesday, it was the size of, I mean, like a, almost like a volleyball. When he told me I was gonna to have to have surgery, um, that was like three o'clock in the afternoon, and I was in surgery about five o'clock that evening. He had kind of described a, an incision about like this, you know, somewhere in here um, to, to clean all this out. And I, like I said, I woke up with a, a 14 inch incision, basically went from here, just up above my knee. Um, and uh, it was really surprising and when the doctor came in and said, you know, this is a lot worse than, than what I anticipated. It was, that was a scary moment. And once they found out it was MRSA, MRSA infection, um, things became a little more serious as far as the tone of, of the hospital and the doctors and whatnot, um, because they were, they were worried that it would continue to progress. And there was some, some conversation with my wife and I, and I believe my parents as well about the possibility of, of losing my leg and, and and ultimately, if left untreated, would, would kill me. You know? After the second time they had to do surgery, they went in and they, they uh, made a second incision because the infection had spread up my leg um, up towards, basically from my ankle to my tailbone, it had spread, so they had to make a, an incision higher up on my leg to, to get to the, 
the infection. Um, there's about a two day waiting period in there where they were just waiting to see whether or not the, the, the medical attention that they were giving me was, was working. And uh, fortunately it did, and, and I think I was lucky from that standpoint. And I'll never ever forget the first time um, they bent my leg after surgery. Um, it, it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I spent the first month out of the hospital. I was in the hospital for 10 days, I believe, nine or 10 days. And then the, following that, I, I was basically bedridden. I was in bed for, for a month after that. It happened at the end of, at the end of January. Um, and if I was uh, you know, competing, it would have completely ended you know, any hope to finish the season at that point. So we've talked about how serious and dangerous MRSA is, but where does it live? Well, the most dangerous place of all might be a locker room. MRSA loves warm, humid environments. In fact, these bacteria can hang out and live on a bar of soap or a wet towel for days, just waiting until the next innocent victim comes along. That's why they call this community-acquired MRSA, because it can spread through a whole community or team. One of the most common ways MRSA is spread is through the hands, and fortunately, that's easy to fix. In fact, the best way to beat MRSA is to practice good hygiene along with whatever sport you play. We want to stress that when we wash, we, we talk to our athletes and wash, when we're washing our hands, that we wash up above the elbow with an antimicrobial soap um, to make sure that, because that's the, the biggest area of skin-to-skin -skin contact is going to come with your hands. You know, MRSA is, is alive on, on wrestling mats, towels, um, football pads, knee pads, any kind of anything that your skin is going to come in contact with, you know, uniform wise, in any sport. So, one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, when somebody puts on a, a knee pad or an elbow pad um, and then they take that pad off, they slough some of the dead skin cells off. And um, that is where uh, the staph infection can live off the, the dead skin cells that, that are um, remaining in, the, in that particular pad. Here are a few tips to keep you safe in the locker room and in competition. Because MRSA loves sweaty skin, wash with an antibacterial soap like HibaCleanse. Hands are the greatest risk, so hand washing is the best defense. Make sure you wash the skin that's underneath pads with an antibacterial soap like HibaCleanse. Have your athletic trainer Look at the most suspicious lesions. Wash your workout clothes in hot water, then dry them with hot air until they're completely dry. And always clean your equipment. You know, I, I'm a living example of someone who is fairly diligent in, in making sure that I am hygienic, um, but at the same time, there are some other preventative measures that we need to take to, to make sure that, that these things aren't happening. And uh, that's the one thing that I would tell athletes is, is that it, it, this can happen to anybody in any sport. One thing for sure is that MRSA affects all sports, whatever sport it is. If you get sweaty, come in contact with other players, share common gear, or even just touch common services. You've got to remember that your best defense is a shower with an antimicrobial cleanser like HibaCleanse. MRSA is invisible and dangerous, but it can be beat. Just like any competitive sport, you have to take the workout as serious as game day. By practicing good hygiene in the locker room and in competition, we can keep this dangerous little bug from even being a factor. Trust me, washing with an antimicrobial cleanser like HibaCleanse will now forever be a part of my workout. Long term, you know, it's taken me a long time to recover, I think, but in the end, I, I'm lucky from the sense of I've, I've been able to coach and, and wrestle, you know, pretty much freely right now. Um, but I got lucky.